This is the most expensive tank that I own in my garage. It is the Scepter. It's basically a reskinned M3 Yo with a slightly different mechanic on its tracks. It can reverse at four kilometers per hour when it's tracked where the tech tree can't. Everything else is exactly the same. How is this the most expensive tank in my garage, you might be asking? Well, it cost me around one billion credits to get my hands on this vehicle. Billion with a B. Yeah, you heard that right. Now, thankfully, playing on my main account for years and years and years allows you to accumulate so many credits you don't know what to do with. So when the Luxury Lounge event came out around the corner, I was like, heck yeah, I'm just going to spend all my credits on it, which I did. But still, 1 billion credits is an absolutely insane amount. 250,000 gold will get you 100 million credits. And a billion credits is 10 times that. So 2.5 million gold gets you how many credits I spent to get the scepter. 2.5 million gold. If you subtract that by the 37,500 gold it costs, or how much it costs for $100 worth of gold, and then you multiply that, it's around $6,600 worth of gold to get a billion credits six thousand six hundred dollars worth that is insane oh my god yeah so basically the scepter if you were to convert the credits i had from gold conversion is by far the most expensive tank i have in my garage and if you say oh well actually you shouldn't be converting credits into gold or whatever anyway doesn't matter because the amount of time you have to spend to play to get a billion credits is probably worth a lot more than six thousand six hundred us dollars if you had spent that working at mcdonald's probably so um yeah the scepter is by far the most expensive tank in any one of my garages I'll ever have. Maybe the AE Phase 1 will beat that, but as of right now, the AE Phase 1 is not even close to $6,000. But hopefully, one of these days, Wargaming will just give me the AE Phase 1. Oh man, the things I would do for that tank. Either way, we are here on... Uh, Faust, and we're going to see what we can do in this vehicle. The M3O is literally just, or the Scepter is just a reskin to M3O. Its gun is the same, everything is the same, um, which is fine, because the Tech Tree M3O is really good. It's got a fast clip, 2.7 seconds, which makes it slightly faster than all the other Tier 8 clippers. It's got great gun depression, it's either 8 or 10 degrees, I think it's 8, and it has pretty good turret armor. And because of that, you can work a ridgeline very well, you can hide your weak spots, and you can get the job done for the most part. I don't know why I went to the side of the map, I was kind of not paying attention, and I drove over here. So that was my fault, I will admit that. I am the doofus teammate that goes alone. But thankfully, it doesn't really matter, because we're in a high-tier matchup anyway, so it's not too scary of an enemy matchup. We have the Charlemagne in front, and I don't know what he's looking at, but I am going to push up over here and clear the Charlemagne very, very quickly. One of the things I can say is if I ever do drive to the wrong side of the map... Okay, that was an interesting shot. If I ever do drive to the wrong side of the map, I'm going to make sure that at least I am uh, making quick work of my opponents. Oof, that was a good old ram. But they do have an ISU-152 off to the side, which is not exactly what I want. Now, I'm not too worried about the Charlemagne. Yeah, I was about to say, he's not going to be able to hash pen me, so it's not that big of an issue. And our clip does deal over 300 damage a shot, so ideally... We just chill here. We can get one pen into the Charlemagne there. Two pens, and we're going to low roll every shell. Thank God that last shell rolled average, because holy, I would have been mad if it didn't. ISU manages to pen the Tornvon, but thankfully, Tornvon gets a shell straight back into his tank. Okay, that's pretty good. We're just going to drag on up, and I'm going to move over this way. I mean, this should be a win, hopefully. Bro, this Torn Vaughn just drove in front of the ISU again and lost another 600 health. That's pretty bad. All right, well, the ISU 130 got nuked by the Smasher. They have a Silencer. I mean, at this point, it's looking like a pretty solid win, I'm going to be honest. Let's see. ISU's off to the side. And, hmm. Let's see, let's see. Well, we get one pen into the ISU. Two pens in. He's dead. 
We got the silencer right in front of us. I'm not even going to bother the HEM. We're just going to get an AP out for 327. We're already up to 2,200 damage. And this is where autoloaders are just so good, is when you're able to sit in cover, reload your clip like this. We got eight seconds left, and we'll have a full clip ready. And this WZ-111 is obviously not going to enjoy this, as long as we're able to get our shells out. So we're going to push here. There you go. One nice shell. Ooh, can we ammo rack him? Let's shoot him in the same spot again, and one more. No, we're not able to ammo rack him, but we still took about 1,000 HP off of that WZ-111, bringing us from what was 30 or 2,200 damage to over 3K. So even though I went to the wrong side of the map, thankfully I was able to make quick work of the Charlemagne. I was able to distract an ISU and overall come out with an easy win. And I have a feeling that Smasher is going to, yeah. That WZ was not the brightest bulb and did not see the Smasher aiming at an HE on his rear. Either way, I can't get too mad. A win's a win. And that was a very solid game. 3,400 damage. We got a first class. We probably made some decent credits. That's the one other advantage of this vehicle over the Tech Trio is that it's obviously a premium, so you can earn credits, which is quite nice. So it's not the worst thing ever. In fact, if you manage to get lucky in the Luxury Lounge event and you get on this tank again, you are able to get, I think it's like 10,000 gold every time you land on this vehicle, which is kind of crazy. People always say World of Tanks Blitz is not free to play, and that's just completely wrong. I mean, my free to play account alone has over five or six collector tier 10s, which is kind of insane. It's probably got about 15 or 16 tier 8s that are premiums and collectors, some of which are overpowered, like the T77. If you save gold correctly, and you save up credits for events like the Luxury Lounge, and you participate in events. For example, we had the Elephant event that was out just, what, a couple weeks ago. In the Elephant event, I got around 6,000 gold. Some people got 10,000, 15,000 gold if they got lucky and re-rolled the tank a couple times. Uh, we just had an event not too long ago where you could get more gold. The Amex CDA 105 currently going on. You can convert the vehicle for 3,700 gold or something like that if you already have it. All the time, there are ways to get tanks for free and to get gold for free. I mean, the Skoda T27 event where you could get the Clipper for free was amazing. There's just so many good events around every now and then. It's always, always good for people. But here we are in game number two. We're obviously going to focus on this battle. I'm going to ping for the team to go wide here. They have an Emil 1, an IS-5, a T28 prototype, and a Tiger P. So that is four heavy tanks. And I have one as of right now, which is a KV-3, because the Luva is AFK, and the T-28 prototype and IS-2 shielded are going to the other side of the map. So what I'm going to do is a very uh, primitive move, which I'm going to get hauled down right at this little spot here. And this allows me to detect anything that might be slow in the crossing. However, it appears that there's nothing there. They might have a scorpion or something in the back, and we can actually see that a shot was fired at us. There you go, an enemy IS-5. All right, well, that's not too much of an issue, is it now? We're going to aim it on the IS-5. Get one pen into his tank. We get one miss. And we also get penned for a pretty cheap, decent chunk, around 400. It's most likely the Scorpion. Could also be the T28 prototype, though. Not loving the uh, situation I'm in right now, though. So the Luva? Okay, the Luva is here, at least. Nice. All right, let's reload. We got three seconds left. And let's see. The IS-5 is just kind of sitting out in the open. So we got one pen into his tank. Two pens into his tank. Don't think we're going to be able to get the third out, but that's fine. That's still 600 damage. I mean, that's the great thing about autoloaders is you are just able to get out more damage than if you were a single-shot tank. Now, that's why I did not go with the KV-3. It's quite easy to understand. That's a lot of death. I don't want to die, so I'm not going to go there. Thankfully, I was smart enough to understand that uh, it probably wasn't going to go well for me if I did. So we are going to make our way over towards the Scorpion, and we're going to load in one HE into his vehicle. We're going to load in an AP, finish him off. The IS-5 is going to pen us, but, man, I will say the on-movement dispersion of this vehicle is really bad. Like, it's, it's quite bad. We've missed a lot of shells on the move, which you wouldn't think should miss, but they, they definitely have been. Again, it's not the biggest deal ever. We have plenty of health left, and we're doing fine in this game. It's just very annoying to see shots like that missing. So we're going to aim it on the Tiger P. There you go. We got one pen into his vehicle. Two pens into his tank. Not able to get the third out, but we start our clip reload. G generic advice when it comes to autoloaders is the moment you don't have shells on somebody and you've already dumped the majority of your clip, just reload. Because there's no downside to it, right? Right now I'm reloading for absolutely free. Nobody's shooting me. I'm not bleeding any health. This is all just free right now. 
And now that the Tiger P has gotten detected, I'm once again able to start shooting him. So basically, reloading my clip here was just an absolute dub. And we aren't able to finish him off, but that's fine. Because again, we're already reloading the clip. 16 more seconds. Hopefully, we're going to be able to get another chunk of damage out into this enemy Emil 1. We'll see if that's actually the case, but it should be. We only have seven more seconds left and we'll be on the side of his vehicle. He's got a super speed boost on reverse and the Centurion bounced him once already. So here we go. Three, two, one. There's one pen into his vehicle. And two. And three. There you go. So that is 3,700 damage dealt. Autoloaders are just the best. I mean, it's simple, but they completely dominate the game. You can deal more damage in an autoloader by not poking than you can in any other vehicle, and it's kind of crazy when it comes to that regard. So all that's left is the T28 prototype. I'm thinking we might be able to get one more pen out into his tank. There you go. Actually, a nice roll as well, 364. That was a really, really good chunk. And with that, we actually did over 4K. So... Yeah, this is a great tank. Even though it's based off of a tech tree, does not take away its capabilities at all. I really like the Scepter. I really like the M3O. Um, I don't think it was worth a billion credits, but hey, you got to spend them on something. And usually credits are one of those resources that once you have an unlimited amount, it really doesn't make a difference what you spend them on. So yeah, there you have it, ladies and gents. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Let me know what you guys think about the Scepter in the comments. And uh, hopefully you, I see you in the future. Bye-bye.